Let's look at this example. The first part of it is very similar to the previous example that I demonstrated. We are asked to plot a theoretical function, in this case, a trigonometric function, sine x, from x equals to negative 2 pi to 2 pi. Um, we not only need to plot this function itself, but we also need to determine its derivative function as well as its integration function for the same domain and plot them as well. So that's the first part of this example. And then for the second part, we're going to use Excel to carry out numerical differentiation as well as numerical integration. And then we're going to compare the numerical method to the analytical method. So let's work on the first part. Again, we are going to pick a bunch of x values. Uh, in this case, x should be the angle given in radium. So you can start with that, but uh, if you are more comfortable working with angles in degree, we can do this as well. So that's optional. So negative 2 pi corresponds to negative 360 degree. And then let's pick a reasonable step. As I mentioned before, when you plot theoretical model, the smaller the step is, the more accurate your graph is. Um, in this case, for demonstration purpose, let me just pick a step of 5 degree. So I will have the next one is negative 355. And then I'm just going to drag and copy the pattern until I got 360, because that's positive 2 pi. And then we can use Excel's building function, radians, to convert from degree to radian. And there's another building function that is called a degrees that, that can be used to convert from radian to degree. Or if you don't remember any of the building functions, you can manually do the conversion. This equals to degree multiplied by pi divided by 180. Same thing. And then just copy and paste the formula. And this column B right here is our independent variable. And then for our original function, fx equals to sine x. We just need to call in the Excel building sine function, which takes an angle in radium as its argument. This is practically zero. Okay. And then we just highlight both columns, insert graph. We want to insert a scattered smooth line graph. I just moved this graph up and gave it some simple axis titles as well as a chart title. And then I want to plot the differentiation as well as the integration functions on the same graph. Therefore, from calculus, we know that for the differentiation, this is, let me call it analytical diff, because we're using analytical method to determine the differentiation of this function. And we know that equals to cosine x. Therefore, we're just going to calculate uh, the corresponding function value in the same way, calling the building cosine function, take the same angle as argument. All right, and the integration, again, this is analytical integration. And that equals to um, cosine, negative cosine x minus negative cosine negative 2 times pi. Let me give it a note right here. Okay, So again, that's based on our calculus knowledge. Okay, So this is actually, if you calculate this out, cosine negative 2 pi equals to 1. So this is actually negative cosine x minus negative 1. Therefore, this is actually 1 minus cosine x.
Okay, this is just a node, by the way. Therefore, this becomes one minus cosine x and copy and paste the entire formula, did the calculation. Now, as I said, I want to plot both of these two on the same graph. There are multiple ways to do it. You can definitely do right click, select data, and then start adding your series. Um, but in my opinion, the best way is to simply select this series of data and then copy and paste. So control C, control V. Let me add legend. I actually have right now two different series. Therefore, I'm going to pick one of them. And then over here, I'm just going to change the column from C to D. So now, as you can see, the orange line right here is my original function. Therefore, let me fix the legend when I still remember it. So select data. My serial number two is actually the original function. And then serial number one is now the differential function. Now I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to control C, control V, copy and paste. So I have created a two copies uh, of my two graphs, existing graphs. And I'm going to select this and change the column number from D to E. And this one, even though it's labeled differentiation, uh, it is actually my integration function. So right click, select data. And this last one right here, I need to change the name to integration. And I have two originals, so let me get rid of one of them. And um, I can change the order of these three series. So I can move that up by click here. And if I'm not happy with the color, I can change the color as well. I can change this, for example, to um, a green color. So now I have completed the first part of this example. I have determined using analytical method the differentiation function of sine x as well as the integration function of sine x integrated from x equals to negative 2 pi. And I have plotted all three of them on the same graph. So you can clearly see that this orange graph is the original sine function. The green graph is the differentiation function, which is cosine x. And the blue graph curve right here is the integration from negative 2 pi. Now I'm making two copies of this graph. And for the first copy, I'm going to change this to analytical diff versus numerical diff. Because here I'm going to um, graph my two differential functions side by side. So from here, I'm going to delete this graph right here. And I'm going to delete this graph right here. So I'm only keeping the analytical differential uh, function that we determined earlier. And the next one, I'm going to call it the analytical integrate integration versus numerical integration. So on this graph, I want to plot the two integration functions side by side. So here, I'm going to delete the orange one. I'm going to delete the green one, so only keeping the integration function. So now over here, I'm going to do my numerical diff. And then over here, I'm going to do the numerical integration. OK, so how do we do that? So let's briefly talk about how to differentiate a function as taught in the calculus class. Imagine this is the graph of your arbitrary original function fx. Uh, we can find two points on this graph, x1, y1, and another point on this graph represented by its coordinates x2, y2. And we can draw a right triangle connecting these two points. And this vertical side right here is delta y. That is the change in the uh, y coordinates of the two points. 
and this horizontal side right here is delta x, which equals to x2 minus x1. And the slope of this hypotenuse side can be determined by simply delta y over delta x. Now, if you imagine this point right here, starts moving along the curve towards the second point and it gets closer and closer and closer to this second point which means that delta x gets smaller and smaller and it approaches zero when that happens we can use delta y over delta x to approximate uh, to approximately represent the derivative of this function at point x2 y2 uh, and that's exactly what we're going to do, and that's why we meant by the numerical differentiation. Now, you might argue, how come we don't use this to represent, to approximate the derivative at point x1, y1, or a point, say, in the middle right here? Um, you could choose to do that. However, it really does not matter when the step we choose gets smaller and smaller. When the step we choose gets smaller, all three different ways of approximations will become highly similar. Therefore, coming back to our Excel file, we're going to calculate for every data point the change in the function value, that's our y2, minus the previous function value, that is our y1, divided by our x2 minus x1. Let's do it again. This equals to the new function value minus the old function value divided by the new x value minus the old x value. And at this point, we can just start dragging and paste. And we're going to graph our H column on this graph. So I'm going to basically just copy and paste. And then because I want to keep the color for our analytical one, therefore let me go over here. And this one right here, I'm not going to change it, but I'm going to change the title to be analytical. For the second one, I do want to change. I want to change the D to H. And I want to change the legend, the name of the series, to numerical differentiation. And then let me change the color of this series. This is the series of numerical integration. So let me change it to, let me just change it to red. And I, I'm going to send it to its own chart. So as you can see, the green curve is the analytical differentiation uh, graph that we did earlier. And the red curve is the numerical differentiation that we just calculated using Excel, which actually doesn't involve knowledge of calculus. Uh, the numerical method itself only involves algebra, actually. Um, as you can see, they are very close. Uh, they can be even closer when you change the step size. Remember, I choose a step size of 5 degree. So if you change that, if you make it smaller, make it 1 degree, give it a try, you will see that this numerical um, approximation is going to get even closer to the, our analytical uh, differential, uh, differentiation plot. So that shows you this alternative option to do differentiation. So you have learned analytical differentiation in calculus, but now you have learned the numerical differentiation method using Excel. And it would generate very satisfactory results, very close approximation to the um, analytical method. Now let's briefly talk about how to do numerical integration in Excel. So from calculus, we learned that the, to integrate a function is to find the area under the curve. Um, for this portion above the x-axis, the area is positive, And for this portion below the x-axis, the area is negative. So if we want to integrate between these two limits from x1 to x2, so basically we need to find this total area. And to do that, we can uh, divide it into small strips. And if we can determine the area of each strip and then add them together, that will be the total area under the curve. 
And to, to determine the area of each strip, I'm going to approximate each strip as a rectangle. And I am using the right side of the function value on the curve to be the height of the rectangle. And the area of the rectangle is easy to determine. It's simply the height multiplied by the step size, delta x. And I do all the calculation, add them all together, and I'm going to use that sum to approximate the total area of this curve. So you can easily tell that the smaller the step I choose, the better approximation result I will get. Um, this is the same um, reasoning as numerical differentiation. So smaller step size leads to more accurate approximation. And also, when I pick this point to be the height of the rectangle, this is called the right-sided Riemann sum method. You can also use the left-sided Riemann sum by picking this one to represent the height of the rectangle. Or you can use the trapezoid method, basically approximate each strip as a trapezoid instead of a rectangle. However, don't forget, when the step size gets smaller, all these methods will essentially give the same approximation. Okay, coming back to Excel, the first value here will be zero because at the lower integration limit, if we're talking about the area under the curve, there's no area, therefore the integration value is zero at this point. And then for the next one, as I said, I'm going to use the right side function value to be the height of my rectangle, remember that, and that height multiplied by delta x, so the change in the x value, that's the width of my rectangle, that's the area of one strip plus the previous one, and that is the numerical uh, integrated value at the next data point. And then moving on, doing one more demonstration, again, I'm going to use the right side function value as my height multiplied by the change, even though I'm using even steps, I'm still going to do this because it makes more sense mathematically, minus the previous one. So that's my delta x, the step size. And this is the area of the new strip plus the previous total area. And then I'm just going to copy and paste. Now I've done the calculation. Over here on this graph, I'm going to copy paste my graph, and then I'm going to select data, edit. I'm going to edit my second one to be not E, but J. That will also have a new name. That will be my numerical integration. And the other one will be my analytical integration. Okay, again, let me change the color. Let me change it to bright purple. And I'm going to send it to its own chart. So as you can see, these two curves they are not exactly the same, but they are highly similar. Once again, if I change the step size to be even smaller, my approximation will get even closer to the analytical integration. So again, this shows you an alternative way to do integration. You've learned the analytical method, but now you've learned the numerical method, taking advantage of the powerful calculation capability of Excel.